Hello and welcome to part three of Landed Cost module review. In this episode, we will be talking about costing and invoicing. Let's take a look at the example. First, we will create a new voyage. Click New, type in Description, select Vessel, select Journey Template. That's an important field for our costing part. And let's select a shipping company. Here, you see the list of shipping companies. In order to see a vendor in this list, we have to make sure that it has appropriate setup here. So let's take a look at the vendor here. And under miscellaneous details, under shipping type, make sure that it is set as a shipping company. And once you do that, you will see that vendor in the shipping company drop down list here. All right, let's click, click on new. Now we will be taken to Voyage Editor screen. From here, we will filter on our purchase order. This is a single purchase order. You see it has the same number 451, but it has two delivery dates. That's why we see two lines for a single purchase order. You can also see related other lines under here. So we see a single purchase order line with a delivery date of 71. And we also see another line from the same PO with a different delivery date of 61. Once we added those two PO lines to our voyage, what I will do here is I'll enter measurement for each line. Each line was added to a separate container. You can see it right here. And it also was added to a separate folio. So for the first line that represents a container that is 20 feet long, I'll add a measurement of four. And for the second one that represents a 40 foot container, I'll add a measurement of eight. And under measurement for my entire voyage, I'll say 12. And I'll explain later what that means. Now we can take a look at the voyage cost section right here. If we click on it, we will see four lines automatically added to our brand new voyage. Each line represents a separate cost type. All these were added using auto cost functionality and they can be edited here. But let's take a look at the auto costs first. We will navigate to our landed cost module and click on auto costs. Here, the first selection is the cost area and you will see that all of my auto costs were set up on the cost area of voyage. But you can also define costs components on the shipping container level folio, PO header, PO line, which is an item, or the transfer order line. And we also have a filter here. This is only applicable when we have a shipping company 20, which is Pacific International Lines, and when the shipment goes from this port in China to this port in Melbourne, Australia. How does the system know that these are the ports? Well, remember, if we go back to our voyage, we can look at the journey template that actually defined the from port and the to port. So that's why the system knows that these charges right here are applicable based on the from and to ports. So the freight is $1,000 fixed value. How is it gonna be apportioned to the items that we're gonna bring on that purchase order? Well, in this case, it's gonna be apportioned based on the quantity. Now, if we click on the general tab right here and cost inquiry, and let's just sort by the cost type, so if the first two lines are $500 each, and they are for two different items, 1002 and 1001. The reason they were apportioned equally is because our purchase order was for 500 units each. So the quantity was equal, so it's one-to-one -one ratio. That's why that $1,000 freight was apportioned equally between those two lines. Let's go back to our auto cost again. And let's take a look at the second line, which represents an insurance cost type. The category here is a percent, and it's a 0.1% of a link cost type freight. So we basically know that this is a 0.1% of $1,000, which equals to $1. And the apportionment method here is by the amount. So let's go back to our cost types right here. And let's take a look at this insurance, which are those two lines on the bottom. What we see here, we have 75 cents for the item 1002 and 25 cents for the another item. So we know that the total was indeed $1. But why is it a portion one to three ratio? Well, if we go back to our, to our voyage here, we see that the quantity is equal, but the purchase price is one to three, right? We see $100 for this first line and $300 for the third line. That's why we have this apportionment using that one to three ratio in our cost inquiry for insurance. And I think the most interesting one will be this fuel charge right here. What we see under fuel is the category is the rate, 
and the apportionment is the measurement. So we see a cost value of two. So what does it two represent? Let's go back to our voyage. And it's basically a multiplier for our measurement that we have set up on the voyage header. So here we see a value of 12 and we have a rate of two. So we're gonna multiply 12 by two to get our $24. So the total charge for fuel will be $24. Now, how is it gonna be apportioned here? Well, we're gonna check the measurement here and we see that for this first line right here, we see a measurement of four and that for the second line, we see a measurement of eight. So we have one to two ratio here, which equals to, if we look at our cost inquiry, the first line gets two thirds of those $24, which is $16 right here. And the second line gets one third of those $24, which is $8. So that basically explains how the system automatically calculated those estimated charges based on auto costs set up. We have done in this form right here. Now let's proceed with updating our voyage. In this example, I'm using the voyage that does not use goods in transit functionality. If you're interested in it, please check out the first part of this series. And also I will mock up a scenario where the receipt and invoice of those goods happens before invoices from carriers show up. So the first thing I'll need to do here is actually go and receive my purchase order. You can do it from the purchase order form directly, or you can navigate to manage tab right here and under purchase order, click on post product receipt. One note of advice, if you do not see anything in this form right here, that means the purchase order that you're working with has not been confirmed. So make sure that to do that before you jump into that form. Here we need to specify our receipt number, let's say 200. The quantity will be ordered quantity. You can also use arrival journal instead. As a prior step, I'm just going to go straight to the product receipt instead. And here I'm going to just click on OK. So now, once the product receipt had been posted, we're gonna check inventory transaction that was generated. Let's take a look, inventory transactions. So here we see a receipt of 500 units in our warehouse 11. The next step in our process will be to invoice our purchase order. We can do it from the voyage screen as well. Click on post invoice. Here we're gonna enter invoice number. Click on update match status. I have this mismatch here that says failed and the fail here was caused by mismatch on the product receipt quantity. For some reason, the system was not able to find the product receipts that I have posted here. So what I have to do is click on the match product receipts and find the receipt of 500 for the first line table and for the second line plastic chair. When I do that match and then click on update match status, the status will change to past. I'm not sure if I'm missing something here or there's a bug, so I'd be curious to hear your opinion on it. All right, and once we have that, we're gonna generate our invoice. So now we see a status of our two PO lines as invoiced. Now let's take a look at inventory transactions. We have uh, inventory transaction of status purchased, 500 units, and the cost here, again, it was based on our estimated cost of 50,508. And for the second line, we have a very similar situation, 150,516. Keep in mind, those are still estimated costs because we have not received any invoices from our shipping companies yet. We can also look at voyage costs here, select a specific cost type, for example, freight, which has an estimated cost of $1,000. Click on inquiries and look at the estimated adjustments. So here we see an estimated adjustment of $500 each for each line right here, which totals to $1,000 estimated cost. We can also look at the voucher here and we can see that the total adjustment value of uh, $1,025, that's $1,000 for freight, $24 for fuel and $1 for insurance was already posted to this clearing account, landed cost clearing account. And if you need, want to know where to set up that clearing account of six, 600, 150, we will go back and we're gonna click on the cost type code here. And this is a cost type code setup here where we define our clearing account. Keep in mind that for this example, we are using items that have been set up with a FIFO valuation method. And similarly for insurance, we have a $1 estimated cost. We can review our estimated adjustments here. So we see that $1 split based on the value right here. And our fuel of $24 right here was split on based on the measurement. 
So the next step in our process will be to mock up the receipt of invoices from a shipping company and post it. So in order for us to do that, I will navigate to my accounts payable module under invoices and open invoice journal. So all shipping company invoices are posted using invoice journal. In here, I will create a brand new invoice. Click on lines. Here I have to select a shipping company vendor account. So I just type Pacific. So here it is. And under credit field, I have to enter a total invoice value. Remember, our estimated costs were around $1,025. And let's pretend I got an invoice for $1,500 instead. Once I do that, now I need to match it to my estimated costs. And I have to use this function right here and select voyage costs. And under voyage field right here, I have to select my voyage ID and then click on OK. So here I see my 1000 for freight as the next estimated value, $1 for insurance and 24 for fuel. And now I need to allocate the $1,500 invoice that I got across those lines. So there are multiple ways to do that. For example, I can just click on the allocate and I can type in the value myself menu, or you can use the distribute function right here. Here you need to select across which code you would like to distribute that value. So let's say I'm going to distribute it to insurance. And let's say I actually had $2 instead of one. So I'm going to click on OK. So here is my $2 and my line was selected. And then the remainder, I can use the distribute function as well. So it's going to be distributed to fuel right here. And this is automatically calculated as a remainder of those $1,500. Click on OK. So now my entire $1,500 were distributed. I'm going to click OK to generate my journal lines. Here I forgot to enter invoice number, so I'll enter some number right here. And I should be able to post my vendor invoice journal. Once that has been posted, now I will go back to my voyage and let's take a look at the inventory transaction for the first item. Remember it was $5,500. $8 or something like that estimated. So now if we go back here, we see that has actually changed and were increased uh, from 508 to 699.83 based on the actual invoice that we got. And if you would like to see a more detailed breakdown, again, we can navigate to voyage costs here, select our cost type, freight. Remember it was estimated as 1,000, but the actual cost actually turned out to be $1,200 instead. So extra $200 and we can look at the actual adjustments instead, and we can see those $1,200 were again apportioned based on the quantity, and this instead of $1, we actually got $2, and if we look at the actual adjustments, now they were apportioned using the same method, which was the value, and the same thing for the remaining costs as well. So the only thing that is remaining at this point in time is to actually change and cost our voyage. We're still in that open, uh, voyage status, we can click on in transit to change the status to goods in transit. Now we're going to click on ready for costing. There is some validation happening. I think it's going to check to make sure that you have received your goods in transit, which we have not used in this scenario, and also make sure that the vendor invoices have been posted, which we did. And the last tab, last status for the voyage will be to turn it to costed status. I'm going to use the current day today, click on OK, and now our voyage status has been changed to costed. That is all I wanted to show to you today. Thank you for your attention. Until the next episode.